how the chiropractic assistant can stimulate referrals. Referrals don't necessarily just happen. They are more often developed. Getting referrals is similar to harvesting a crop. First you prepare the soil by tilling and fertilizing, and then you have to sow the seeds and nurture them. When a patient in a chiropractic office receives courteous service and experiences good results, the seeds, or referral suggestions, can be sown and expected to grow. But if you don't plant seeds, the harvest may be meager. Likewise, if you don't prepare the soil, the seeds you plant may not grow abundantly. So this record will show some of the things that you, the chiropractic assistant, can do to stimulate in your doctor's patients the desire to refer. In the seminars, we call this creating the referral mood. To create this referral mood, you must first make friends of patients. To do this, you must be friendly, not necessarily talkative, but friendly. Be a good listener. Be kind. Be warm. No one associates for very long with a person he doesn't really like, one in whose company he feels uncomfortable. You see, C.A., in a sense, you are a sales lady, for you must sell patients on becoming friends. Only patients who are friends refer others. Even though patients have received fabulous results, they will not refer unless they become your friends. In the seminar, we call these individuals spectator patients because they rarely refer regardless of the results. Those who become friends and refer regularly, we call participating patients. So make friends of your patients by being friendly. Also, to create the desired referral mood in patients, you must know chiropractic. What do we look for when we want to buy something? We usually look first for a person who knows his product from A to Z, don't we? Your patients are no exception. If you want to convince them of the benefits of chiropractic, know your subject. How much do you really know about chiropractic, C.A.? Have you the curiosity and vision to acquire the extra knowledge of chiropractic that you need? If you want to manage the type of office that will encourage patients to want to tell their friends and relatives about chiropractic, you must project the attitude of confidence into each new patient. And you can't do this by being haphazard and lukewarm toward chiropractic because you know too little about it. In order really to stimulate referrals, you yourself must testify constantly. That is, you must keep the conversation always on a positive note, and you must drop in your important referral seeds any and every time the opportunity arises. For instance, when someone breezes into the office with a friendly, how's business, reply, wonderful, thanks to a lot of good people like you who are interested in the health of others and tell their friends about chiropractic. This sows a seed in the patient's mind that you and the doctor expect him to tell others about chiropractic. And you can do more to stimulate a patient to refer other members of his family than anyone else. Mothers, for example, will just naturally be talking to you about little Susie or young Mike. You might ask Mrs. Smith in a casual, natural way, my, you look well today, Mrs. Smith. How's everyone else in your family? If someone in the family isn't well, she will tell you about it. Or if you know the names of a patient's children, inquire about them personally by saying, how are Susie and Mike getting along, Mrs. Smith? If they are fine, she will appreciate your interest. If they should be ill, she will tell you. Now, right here, C.A., I want to emphasize that you are certainly not using high pressure or being too much of an eager beaver by recommending chiropractic to patients for various disorders. Always remember that most patients fail to bring their families in not because they don't believe in chiropractic, but simply because they are not aware of its excellent benefits 
in almost all conditions. For example, many people don't know that chiropractic is very effective for colds, fevers in children, stomach disorders, and many hundreds of other diseases that plague humanity. And they are more than happy to bring other members of their families to your doctor when they learn of the far-reaching results of chiropractic adjustments. So never be afraid to praise chiropractic and then use examples of just what chiropractic has done for others suffering from some particular disorder. When a patient expresses to you how wonderful he feels or how marvelous chiropractic is to accomplish such wonders, the time is psychologically ripe to sow a referral seed. You might ask, Mrs. Smith, who referred you to Dr. Parker? This is a leading question, even though you probably already know the answer. When she tells you, you might say, well, you know now what a favor Mrs. Jones did for you. Now you will want to be a good Samaritan and take the time to tell some of your sick friends about chiropractic. In this way, you will be doing them the biggest favor of their lives. Then drop the subject unless she pursues it. The weather is one of the most talked about subjects you will hear in the reception room. So use it as an effective tool to create a favorable referral mood. When Mr. Brown comes in panting and puffing from the heat, you might remark, yes, it surely is a terribly hot day, Mr. Brown, but at least one good thing about it is that all these arthritic people may feel somewhat relieved. Of course, it's not as good for arthritis as chiropractic, but too few people know that. On a rainy day, you could answer a patient's complaints about the weather with, yes, rainy weather is pretty messy, but at least it clears the pollen out of the air and gives a little relief to the hay fever, allergy, and asthma sufferers who don't know about chiropractic. I guess everything is a type of blessing for someone. Chances are the patient will remark, oh, I didn't know chiropractic could do anything for asthma. This is your opportunity to elaborate on what you have seen chiropractic adjustments accomplish for an asthma sufferer who could hardly draw a free breath when he first came to the office. If a patient complains about the cold weather, you could answer, well, at least one good thing about this cold weather is that it stirs up the blood in the people who are so tired and run down in hot weather but don't know about chiropractic. So CA always endeavored to steer the conversation to sickness and disease and then help through chiropractic. When you use some of these leading statements, human nature and curiosity being what they are, chances are these referral comments will work like a charm. The true essence of a patient's ability to influence another to come to see your doctor is the enthusiasm he radiates for chiropractic. So don't try to explain the deep philosophy or the patient. Chances are he won't understand anyway. Just talk results. That's what the patient is interested in. You don't care, for example, how the mechanic timed the points or replaced the rings on your automobile as long as it starts quickly and runs smoothly when you step on the gas. Remember a patient with great enthusiasm for results obtained, but with little knowledge of chiropractic, can refer much more easily than a patient with great knowledge of chiropractic but little enthusiasm. And timing is important. The most ideal time to plant referral suggestions in the patient's mind is after the first few adjustments, when he is just starting to respond and his enthusiasm for chiropractic is at its highest peak. For example, when Mrs. Jones comes in and sits down and exclaims, Dr. Parker certainly is helping me. I slept better last night than I have in months. And then you reply immediately, wonderful, I'm so happy to hear that, and Dr. Parker will be too. Aren't you glad someone told you about chiropractic? Or you might say, Mrs. Jones, that's wonderful. That's one of the reasons I love my work here so much. It gives me the opportunity to see so many people regain their health through chiropractic. You can say that chiropractic never ceases to amaze you with its results, and then you can start telling about another case with a common condition and how wonderfully the patient is responding. Don't use names, of course, but just conditions and results. You should talk about patients with common conditions such as headaches, stomach trouble, nervousness, lower back pain, chronic colds and the like, because everyone knows persons who suffer from conditions 
such as these, and this will stimulate them to tell their friends that your doctor can help them. Make your story short but effective. After speaking enthusiastically of how chiropractic never ceases to amaze you, you could continue with, just this morning a gentleman was in who started with Dr. Parker last month. He had a severe case of stomach ulcers, had been on several strict diets, had been using extensive medication, and was in great misery before a friend told him about chiropractic. This morning he told me he ate a steak with all the trimmings for the first time in years, with no discomfort whatsoever. You can certainly believe that he was one happy man. Or you could say, well, I'm certainly convinced of the wonders of chiropractic too. Yesterday a woman was in who had been a victim of severe migraine headaches for over 20 years. Before she started with Dr. Parker two months ago, they used to come about every 10 days and literally put her to bed despite shots and painkillers used in vain to relieve them. Yesterday completed one full month that she has gone without a trace of a headache. She is certainly grateful that a friend urged her to come to Dr. Parker. Another excellent approach is, sometimes I can hardly believe the results that come about through chiropractic care. About an hour ago, a mother left here with a child about seven years old. The little fellow had had a severe allergic reaction since birth. He could hardly eat a thing, always had a stuffy nose skin rashes, and his resistance was so low he caught everything that came along which left him weaker than ever. Fortunately, a friend told his mother about chiropractic. He's been under Dr. Parker's care for about three months now and is making wonderful progress. The mother told me today he had eaten wheat cereal and milk for breakfast with no reaction, and these had been two of his worst foods. And that little fellow even looks and acts so much happier and full of life now. Then, after filling the patient with the enthusiasm of what chiropractic is capable of doing, now stimulate the patient to tell others about chiropractic by saying to a responding patient something like this, You know, Mrs. Jones, if only more people knew what you and I know about chiropractic, there will be a lot less suffering in this old world. We need to tell our friends. Some won't listen, of course, but most people will come and thank you afterward for telling them what you know. Or another way would be, Mrs. Jones, we need to tell our friends about what chiropractic can do, because some of them just aren't aware of all the benefits they can receive through chiropractic care. It could be the kindest thing we could do for them. Or you could say, Mrs. Jones, think how you would still be suffering today if someone hadn't been kind enough to tell you about chiropractic. Don't you have friends who need to know what you know about chiropractic? Why not do them a favor and tell them today? They will surely thank you in the days to come. Most offices keep health track pamphlets available which cover what chiropractic can do for a number of diseases. When a patient mentions that he has a friend who is so nervous he can hardly sit still long enough to eat, pick up a pamphlet entitled Nervousness and give it to the patient to take to his sick friend. In the majority of cases, this will open up the conversation about his sick friend, and he will give you many of the details. In the course of the conversation, if he gives you the name of his friend, make a note of it and add it to your prospect list. But if a conversation doesn't open up naturally, then don't pursue it. Make a note of it and repeat the procedure with a different approach the next time he says he feels good. Practice these referral command phrases over and over again. Perfect them until they become smooth and polished and natural for you to use. Pretty soon you will be using them without any conscious effort, and they will just seem like the right thing to say. Some people are distinctly different individuals and cannot be cataloged or indexed. What will work on one may not work on another. So an important part of your job is to learn to evaluate patients by the things they say and do, and then know just what you can say to open up their trap door and make them want to refer others. Sometimes a patient will come to your doctor in severe pain and your doctor will relieve that pain. Then that patient will be so enthusiastic and so impressed that he will refer everyone he sees to your doctor. You have probably had the experience of meeting someone for the first time who, when he finds you are associated with a chiropractic office, 
will spend a great deal of time telling you how much a chiropractor helped him 20 years ago. However, strange as it may seem, the patient the doctor has helped the most will not necessarily be the one who ends up referring others as much as one who has been helped only slightly. You may have a patient come in who is literally at death's door. He has made the rounds of medical clinics and hospitals, has had surgery, and lives on so much medication that his mind has become fuzzy. He comes to see your doctor, completes a series of adjustments, and is a new man. He feels wonderful. He can play golf and go fishing again. He is free of pain, and life looks rosy to him for the first time in years. You would think he would refer everyone he sees, wouldn't you? But in many cases, this just isn't true. He is the spectator type patient. This is the man who has the attitude that doctors are supposed to get people well. So what's there to get so excited about? He doesn't praise the plumber who fixed his leaky pipe. He doesn't gush with excitement because the painter greatly added to the beauty of his home by redecorating it. And he doesn't feel the barber is just sensational because he gave him an excellent haircut. So he doesn't think the chiropractor is just great because he made him well. These people were all just doing the jobs they were paid to do. So it is quite obvious that this patient must be stimulated to refer others by something other than the good results he has received through chiropractic care. This patient must be impressed by the doctor, by the professional office, and by the doctor's staff before he will refer others. And about the only way you can impress him is by going the extra mile. Make your office so pleasant and so filled with the service concept that he just can't help but be impressed and refer others. Show a warm personal interest in each patient. No patient, nor anyone else, likes to feel he is only a number on a file card or that ulcer case that came in last week. Do the little things that the patient does not expect from a professional office. After the patient has received his first adjustment and gone home, telephone him and say, Hello, Mr. Jones, this is Miss Smith at Dr. Parker's office. Dr. Parker asked me to telephone you and see how you are getting along after your adjustment today. This little act of thoughtfulness causes the patient to be filled with appreciation that your office was kind enough to care. Believe me, patients aren't used to service of this kind if they have made the rounds of offices of the other healing arts. When a patient leaves the office after his first or second adjustment, Hand him a card with a doctor's home telephone number on it. Say, Dr. Parker wanted me to give you his home telephone number in case you needed to reach him before your next appointment. Chances are he will never use it, but it gives him a feeling of confidence and assurance just to know that the doctor is ready to serve him any time the need should arise. Always remember patients on their birthdays and anniversaries with a card and a personal note from the doctor. When your doctor is planning to go to the Parker Seminar, he can write for closing notice cards and seminar or Hotel Texas picture postcards ahead of time. You can send out advance notice of your doctor's absence on the closing notice card, and a great number will rush in for adjustments before he leaves. You can address the seminar or Hotel Texas postcards, and the doctor can fill them in with a friendly little greeting and mail them when he arrives in Fort Worth. Patients are not accustomed to receiving this kind of greeting from their doctors, and they are highly impressed. The message on the postcard should end with, we'll be back in the office Monday at 9 a.m. If you see a picture or news item of a patient in the newspaper, cut it out and send it to him with a little personal message of congratulations from the doctor. Get into the delightful habit of sending at least two thank you notes each day and more if the occasion calls for it. Thank people for little courtesies that almost everyone takes for granted. And always, without fail, send thank you notes to each patient who refers someone to your doctor's office. When a patient comes in who is in pain or is obviously uncomfortable, take him to a rest booth where he can relax in privacy until he can see the doctor. There are literally hundreds of things you can do to make your office a courteous, impressive place. So don't neglect this important aspect of your work. 
These things plant the referral concept into the type of patient who feels that the doctor is supposed to get him well because these extra courtesies are things that he doesn't expect and he doesn't feel they are a part of the service he is paying for, so he appreciates it twice as much. You can't go wrong if you apply this art of graciousness and going the extra mile to each and every patient who comes into your doctor's office. So in summary, always keep in mind that the suggestion and desire to refer sick acquaintances to your doctor can be successfully implanted in the minds of most responding patients. Good office procedure. Going the extra mile, the baker's dozen, coupled with honest and competent chiropractic service to the patient at a reasonable cost, should result in enough referrals at least to maintain a given practice level once it is attained. It is the nature of most people to want to help others. Place racks with literature on various diseases in the reception room, dressing rooms, and other prominent places. When a patient mentions that a friend has a certain condition, be sure to give him literature on that particular disorder for him to take to his friend. And use the referral command phrases that we suggested earlier in this record. Talk enthusiastically about results obtained through chiropractic care. Give the patient extra service that doesn't cost him anything. Inquire about friends, acquaintances, and relatives who might be sick. Send or give appropriate literature to each new patient the day he is accepted and write his name on it. Use thank you notes every day. You may thank patients for referring by giving appropriate gifts, a small personal Bible with space for the patient's name, ice cream cone slips for the youngsters, golden rule marbles, it works booklets, or other inexpensive gifts that are practical, useful, or novel and that make the patient feel really happy that he has referred. CA, don't be afraid to talk to people about spreading the good word of chiropractic. You testify to them, and they will likely testify to others. Lift up your eyes from yourself to suffering humanity and feel its need to know the truth. Your tongue will be loosened, and you will be able to speak freely and easily to everyone about what chiropractic may do for friends and loved ones. Constantly stimulate those referrals.